So I remember the time uh, when I joined a huge engineering project. This was more than 10 years ago. It was pretty exciting. And I remember getting really, really daunted by the amount of documentation it had, like really thick binders and the effort it took to add any changes or to even find any information in this documentation just took such a long time. So typically a word processing application created these manuals and the hard copies of these manuals would then go around for comments among the various teams of contractors and clients. Well, it's been more than a decade since then, but even today in large organization and corporations, we are still doing documentation that are not very searchable or not very easy to add information. But the good news is many software tools are making it easy to add, track and view documents in a collaborative and fun manner. Hence, in today's video, I want to share some of these software tools that makes creating documentation much easier in a fun and collaborative manner. The very first task of any documentation is the ability to add in information. And I suggest a few open standards such as the Markdown for text and CSV and JSON for data. And there are so many surrounding tools, viewers, open source frameworks about these formats that it makes creating documents much more accessible. At the heart of, say, Markdown is the simple syntax, headings, quotes, images, bold text, italics text, lists, or even tables can be added easily to create the required information. Here I am using the Markdown Preview Enhanced Viewer from the VS Code text editor. And because Markdown can be eventually rendered as HTML coupled with CSS and JavaScript, we can start adding different types of information into a Markdown file. For example, flowcharts can be added with the Mermaid.js framework, which uses the Markdown-inspired text definitions. A state machine can be very useful in getting an overview of the design of our project. Terminator blocks such as start or end, a decision block to decide a condition or just a process block can be connected to visually describe the entire design. Mermaid.js can also render sequence, Gantt charts, class, state, pie chart, or a user journey. Next, maths and physics equations can be inserted with MathJax, which is an open source JavaScript display engine for LaTeX, MathML, ASCII math notation. Here I use the syntax to render a simple physics equation combining the wavelength, speed of light and frequency. From here on, possibly any complex equations can be rendered with just text. For graphs, I love using D3JS, which uses data and renders them visually in HTML, SVG and CSS. Once again, open standard formats. So let's use Vega Light framework to render a simple line graph that takes data from a locally hosted CSV file. And I'm just scratching the surface with how beautiful and dynamic visuals can be created with Vega, which is based on the D3JS framework. Next, sequence diagrams. They are frequently used in engineering documents to show data exchange between two systems. For example, the three-way handshake in the TCP connection establishment. Here I will instead attempt to draw another simple sequence diagram for the I2C protocol between the microcontroller and the temperature sensor. Now, just for fun, it can even render a handwriting style. And I'm here using the JS sequence diagram framework to turn text inside the markdown file into UML sequence diagrams. The timing or signal diagram is another common feature in engineering documents. WaveDrum is an open source online digital timing diagram rendering engine that can be used to generate them. Here I am rendering the I2C interface timing diagram that I saw in the data sheet. 
the syntax is both readable and markdown compatible. More complex timing diagrams can be drawn as shown in this comprehensive WaveDrum tutorial. So seems like our very short markdown documentation is almost done and we are left with generating of course the table of contents. For this specific VS Code markdown viewer, we can simply trigger the generate TOC or table of contents command. And there you see the TOC is generated. And as the last step, let's automatically generate an HTML web page from this markdown file. So let's rename the file that we created as index.html, which can be now opened in the local web browser for viewing. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Uh, from just a few text uh, based on Markdown. And we can even go ahead and print this page as a PDF, which is, you know, a very, very common file format for engineering documents even today. So now that we have added various types of text information, diagrams, equations, the next biggest challenge is to track them. So who changed this documentation? What, when, where, and why? And these are some of the common questions asked throughout the lifetime of a typical engineering project. Git, the version control can be used to track changes in our engineering documentation because almost everything is text-based. Even images, schematics, or layout files can also be backed up as binary files. A remote repository hub such as GitHub or GitLab, Bigbucket, can now be used to store this git backed directory. So let me first git push origin master and ensure that I have the entire folder uploaded to GitHub. To publish this repository as a web page, all I need to do is access the settings page and then scroll down until we find the section on GitHub pages and turn it on. For my purpose, I need to choose the master branch. And after a short while, our exported index.html file will be rendered as a web page, guess what, on the internet. So far, we have uh, written down our information in Markdown and even generate the HTML page and also backed it up and published it on the internet. And for the sake of a very simple demo, I have basically auto-generated the HTML. In reality, I actually like more control over the exact HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code. And hence, I like to use some sort of a static web page generator framework, such as a GitHub page. And this is powered by Jekyll to write the markdown files. And there are plenty of other choices in terms of static site generators. And if you want to know more about them, visit Static Gen, which is a website that filters the various frameworks by language, programming language, template, or even license. So no matter which uh, static site generator you're using, well, for my purpose, I'm using Jekyll, uh, it doesn't really matter because the concepts are basically the same. And I want to use my very, very simple project site to illustrate some of the features. For example, any project site has common sections, uh, such as the hardware section with the KiCad schematic and layout PDF files, software section with the information on the firmware, bill of materials with designators, links to data sheets, vendors. There are also power sections, mechanical sections, etc. Each of these pages now correspond to a separate markdown file such as hardware.md, software.md, or even bomb.nv. And you can get the idea for the rest of the sections. Now notice that there are some common sections such as this header, no matter which page I visit. Partials make this happen. So the folder, which is underscore includes, contain these partials such as header.html, which describes the type of, say, low power I'm using, wireless, sensor, and microcontrollers used for this project. This information is displayed at the top of every page without me repeating the code that displays them. I also love the way data is handled by static site generators. So let's have a look at this file, bill underscore off underscore materials dot CSV. Now, KiCad can generate this CSV file with default scripts or even custom Python script. 
Now, this generated CSV data file can be embedded directly into the web page by referring each row column by column. So how does the final web page look like? Well, exactly how a bill of materials table should be. So now that we have learned how to add the information in the documentation and even track the changes, here comes my favorite part. Viewing the documentation with some interactivity by using HTML, CSS, and especially JavaScript. Now, documentations traditionally have been very static, but it doesn't have to be. We can add in some useful interactions into our documentations. For example, interactive HTML BOM plugin for KiCad creates a visual correlation between the parts on the PCB and the bill of materials. After installing this plugin, we can generate the interactive BOM by clicking the plugin button in the KiCad's PCB layout editor. And then we can view this interactive bill of materials right in the browser. When we hover over the parts list, the exact part on the PCB will become highlighted and vice versa. Similarly, a static table format like bill of materials can also have interactivity using some JavaScript frameworks such as Vue.js. Here I have added a simple sort key for the designator, the vendor, and the cost that enables us to kind of uh, sort it ascending or descending order while we are doing our design. A search box also helps me narrow down the exact part I'm currently looking for. The cost can also be dynamic by adding a simple currency converter with the JavaScript framework MoneyJS. You know, I started this video by saying how daunted I used to be by looking at engineering documentation, but it doesn't have to be. And in fact, I do see some changes that are happening in startups or even within large organizations, small teams are using formats such as Markdown, CSV, YAML, JSON, and all kinds of software to make documentation so much more approachable. Now to boil it down, I want to share an article and just point out three actionable steps that we can all take. For this, I want to refer to this fine article by Boldport Sar Drimmer on better data sheets. I love how he wrote some of the points and especially I want to zoom into these three points. Number one, ditch PDFs in favor of browser-based viewing. Number two, provide machine-readable information and formula for figures. And number three, create multiple views. So how are we going to use these software tools in the future? Are we going to see some interactive data sheets in terms of graphs and figures? Are we going to have easy searchable bill of materials? Or how about engineering change orders that are backed by the Git version control? Well, there are many, many possibilities. And I hope some of the tools that I've showed you today, uh, you are already using. If not, I would love to know what other tools uh, you are using to make make your engineering documentation. Otherwise, I hope you found this video useful and uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.